In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate this, this unique feast right between, we've, we've been celebrating about a week and a half, we've celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and beginning on Monday for another two weeks we'll celebrate his baptism, and right smashed in between those, for one day we have the celebration of the circumcision of our Lord, together with St. Basil the Great, because he reposed on this day. And this Feast of the Circumcision bears some, it's a cause for reflection for us in a number of ways. For one thing, it highlights that our Lord Jesus Christ truly and fully became a man in every possible way. Um, He was truly flesh. There was no illusion here. So that he was able to be circumcised. The feast also highlights for us in a beautiful way the way in which our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the Old Testament law. And we understand this idea that he fulfilled the law in a number of simultaneous, congruent, and overlapping ways, all of which are present in this feast. Everything points to Christ. All of the prescriptions of the law are foreshadowings, images, and predictions, prophecies about Christ. Everything points to Christ, and then our life itself should reflect and point back to and forward to, and in fact in every direction toward, because he's outside of time, Christ. And so what do we see in this, in in the readings you read today for the circumcision? The when our when when God, the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ, made a covenant with Abraham, he said, The sign of this covenant will be you will circumcise every male on the eighth day. And this was the sign of their dedication to the Lord. Those who were circumcised were dedicated to the Lord to serve him and be one of his from thenceforth on. And those who weren't circumcised were considered not his, and they were not part of the people. There's there's an episode in the life of Moses when because he had had failed to circumcise his sons, an angel came and reproached him for this and and his, his, his wife finally consented, and they circumcised their sons, and God was pleased. So the circumcision was it, was, it was the mark of being among the chosen people, and it happened on the eighth day. And so our Lord, when he was himself incarnate, despite the fact that he didn't need to be dedicated to himself because he was himself, he didn't need to fulfill the law because he gave the law, he didn't need to be redeemed from sin because he had no sin, Yet he was circumcised in the flesh on the eighth day to fulfill all the prescriptions of the law. And from that time forward, as as St. Paul emphasizes in the epistle to the Galatians in the fifth chapter, we don't need to be circumcised. Right? St. Paul even makes this joke about those who were insisting that Christians be circumcised. He said, let them be cut off. That's a joke. It's 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 a play on words. Because we don't need to be circumcised because our circumcision is baptism. And from the early days of the church until now, it has been customary, um, particularly in more ancient times, that every child born to a Christian family was baptized on the eighth day, the day of the prescribed circumcision, because the baptism is the new circumcision. The baptism is the new dedication to the Lord. It was customary in ancient Russia to receive the name of the saint, on the eighth day after your birth. Why? Because that's when you were baptized. And that's the saint who was your protector when you entered into the covenant with our God. Now, today, because infant mortality is not nearly such a thing, and so we can afford to wait, and we want to allow the mother to be at the baptism, we save the baptism till after the 40th day. But we still receive the child into the church on the eighth day through the service of naming, when the priest comes to the home, and the child receives their name on that eighth day still. So that is our circumcision. It's our dedication to Christ. So Christ fulfilled that Old Testament ritual. And we still remember that in our baptism and in our complete dedication of ourselves to him. So our lives should be completely dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't have that same external sign. We have different external signs. But we should, in every single thing we do, remember that we belong to Christ. And in every single thing we think, every single thing we say, all of our thoughts should be in obedience and submission to him. 
May God help us. Amen.